Hi, my name is Ivy. This video will focus on the breastfeeding challenge that occurs when moms have inverted nipples with preterm infants. I will be using the situated clinical decision-making framework as a guide to overcome this breastfeeding challenge. The framework is composed of these five elements. I'll first start with knowledge. Knowledge um, involves knowing the challenge case and various factors that may affect the effectiveness of infant feeding. First, what do I know about inverted nipples? A mom can be born with inverted nipples or develop them due to scarring from some kind of nipple trauma. Signs that are an indication of inverted nipples are nipples will retract when the areola is compressed or nipples do not protrude when stimulated. An inverted nipple is not felt at the roof of the mouth of an infant and does not stimulate the sucking reflex. Fortunately, some infants can actually draw the nipple and effectively feed. Next, what do I know about the premature infant and why they commonly experience breastfeeding challenges? A preterm infant is born at 30, less than 37 weeks gestation, um, while a late preterm infant is born between 34 and 36 weeks gestation. All preterm infants, however, experience breastfeeding challenges because they have an altered suck, swallow, breathing coordination due to neurological immaturity. They also have an inability to regulate states and therefore are rarely in the quiet alert state long enough to feed, or they don't wake at all to feed. Also, preterm infants may seem like they're feeding well, but tire easily and don't feed long enough. All of these contribute to breastfeeding challenges, which if left to continue, can lead to illness like hypoglycemia or continued jaundice. Next, we can look at cues. Cues will help us identify breastfeeding challenges due to inverted nipples or prematurity um, of the infant by looking at typical signs and symptoms, any lab data or assessment data. First, we can look at the mother to assess her nipple to see if it draws out when the areola is compressed. If not, this means that her nipples are inverted, which can indicate presence of a breastfeeding challenge. Other cues specific to the mother that indicate a breastfeeding challenge are engorgement or decreased milk supply, or just decreased maternal confidence in breastfeeding ability. A mother might also think that because she has inverted nipples that she can never effectively feed. This is a misconception that can also indicate a breastfeeding challenge exists. We can look at the infant cues that indicate prematurity or inverted nipples are creating a breastfeeding challenge. Um, these can be an inability to draw out the nipple or poor coordination of sucking, swallowing, and breathing. A sleepy baby who does not wait to feed can be a cue, or a baby that starts off feeding at, breast, at the breast really well but tires shortly after he or she starts. Decreased output or weight gain appropriate for gestational age or worsening jaundice can also be cues. Feeding relationship can also be looked at for cues. Cues can be a poor latch in frequent feeds or just stressful feeds where both mother and infant are just frustrated and stressed out. Next, we can use these cues to form a judgment, which involves determining what could be happening that is contributing to the breastfeeding challenge. At this stage, we also decide who to consult with, and what our priorities are so we can begin to intervene. So, what could be happening with the mother? Well, her inverted nipples might make it harder to transfer milk to the infant, and therefore, the breast then becomes less stimulated and milk production decreases, contributing to the breastfeeding challenge. What could be happening with the baby? The baby might not be feeding well enough, often enough, or long enough, due to sleepy states and poor suck-swallow breathing coordination or just because the nipple is inverted and they're not being stimulated to suck. Next, within the feeding relationship, what could be happening is that separation can occur due to prematurity and the acuity of the situation. So this can contribute to frequent feedings, decreased skin-to-skin -skin contact, and decreased milk protection, which again contributes to the entire breastfeeding challenge. Overall, what seems to be happening is an ineffective feeding um, triggered by prematurity and inverted nipples. A lactation consultant, midwife, if present, and physician should be consulted at the beginning of care with the premature infant just due to their delicate state and overall vulnerability. My priorities for the mother and infant at this point would be to one, feed the infant, two, move the milk, and three, help the dyad learn to breastfeed. With these priorities in mind, we can make decisions and decide on how we can help mothers and infants over overcome the breastfeeding challenge. 
First, to feed the infant, we need to keep in mind that oral feeds for the preterm infant can start when they can coordinate sucking, swallowing, and breathing. This is usually between 28 and 32 weeks, but we generally look at maturity rather than gestational age. Breastfeeding should be encouraged because breast milk optimizes growth while protecting premature infants against infection and illnesses they are vulnerable to. Attempts to breastfeed should be done early and often. An establishment of breastfeeding of effective feeding at the breast can take a long time, so the preterm infant um, and the mom should be patient. So those are some rules to remember. But the first things to try for the mom are to entice the infant with expressed breast milk during skin-to-skin -skin contact. This should start immediately after birth. The infant will start to smell, root, and suckle at the breast. It is best to attempt this when they are in a quiet alert state. Nipple everters, breast shells, breast pumps, breast shields can also be used by the mom to try and um, evert the nipple as you can see in these pictures. Sometimes the premature infant, however, can't feed at the breast either due to poor suck swallow breathing coordination or because they are not awake long enough. That's okay. Other methods to deliver milk are, are to use hand expression or breast pump to extract the milk, then to use a spoon, dropper, or syringe to feed milk to the baby. This is useful for the first days as the stomach is quite small and colostrum is actually very dense and nutrient rich. As the days go on, supplementation might be needed for the preterm infant due to increased demands or if a greater amount of milk needs to be delivered, a feeding tube device can be used. But this is only if the feeding can effectively latch. If the infant cannot effectively latch, gavage feeding, which is essentially an NG tube, might have to be used. But however, frequent attempts to breastfeed, hand expression, and breast pumping should still continue with gavage feeding. Suck, swallow, breathing coordination will eventually develop and active suckling will start to increase and will determine how much express breast milk um, should be given via gavage feeds. There is light at the end of the tunnel and gavage feeds will reduce as breastfeeding increases. Next, we want to move the milk. Throughout the entire breastfeeding continuum, the mom should be encouraged to frequently skin to, um, engage in skin-to-skin -skin contact, hand express, and breast pump. Hand expression should occur within the first hour after birth, no later than six hours after birth, and breast pumping should occur at least eight times a day for 15 to 20 minutes per session. This includes the night. Warm compresses, gentle breast massage, and relaxation can also promote milk letdown. We also want to help the dyad learn to breastfeed, and this involves the entire family. We want to encourage them to come and be involved in the premature infant's care, whether it be changing a diaper or engaging in skin-to-skin -skin contact. This also allows them to learn about their baby, how awake they are at certain times of the day, or what their feeding cues are. We also want to increase the mom's breastfeeding confidence by showing her that breastfeeding can be done in many different ways. We just need to discuss the options with her. And that her inverted nipples are not a defect. In fact, it's just a unique characteristic to her and it can be a challenge that can be overcome. And we need to encourage frequent breastfeeding attempts and lots and lots and lots of skin contact. The effectiveness of our inter interventions can be shown through appropriate weight loss or gain or output, again, appropriate for gestational age, effective latch, a decreased amount of top up from needed garbage feeding if it's used, or just continuing or increased milk production can also mean that interventions like hand expression or pumping are being effective. The key overall points are that inverted nipples and the premature infant can be challenging the good news is that express breast milk can still be transferred in various ways and the mother and infant will develop their breastfeeding abilities with time and patience. We just need to remember that we want to feed the baby, move the milk, and help the dyad um, breastfeed effectively. This concludes my presentation. Thanks for watching.